Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Craig. It is Tuesday, not quite hump day, but it ain't Monday, so it's obviously a little bit better. One day closer to Friday. Anyway, today we're going to talk about who kills in California and why. Uh, the San Francisco Chronicle, about a week or so ago, posted an article uh, with uh, basically outlining some of the statistics that came out of the California Department of Justice relating to homicides. Now, if my first question was, well, you know, let's take a look at the issue as well. Why just homicide? Why not talk about all violent crimes? But they did actually have a little, a little brief section specifically talking about that, but not in the article. Now, you notice now this is the this is kind of the lead photo for the article. And you notice the first thing that they have on there is guns. Why? Because this isn't about talking about homicide. It's not talking about violence. It's about talking about guns. How are we going to get guns? Anyway, so with that, uh, I had a chance to break, kind of break down the article, but most importantly, not just break down the article, but I actually went and I pulled the, the report that actually came from the Department of Justice, and there were some very interesting things uh, that they had noted. Now, granted, they did note that 70% of all killings uh, for which a weapon is probably the, the number one, typically a handgun. Now, I, I want to note that, I want to make sure that I denote that, that once again, 70% of those cases were guns, in particular, they were handguns. I want you to recognize, not semi-automatic rifles, not uh, AR-15s, not uh, uh, 40 cal or 50 cals, um, not all of these evil assault weapons that they want to claim that they're seeking to try and ban here in the state of California. Uh, that they've put restrictions on that they say are creating all of this violence, death, and carnage, those are not the firearms or not the weapons uh, that are being used in particular when it, comes, uh, when it comes to homicide in the state of California. So, uh, so that kind of once again just puts another kibosh or, or, or gets, it, gets in the way of another narrative that these are the firearms that are are creating all this carnage in the state of California. Now, it is important to note that uh, for the first time in, in a very long time, we saw an increase in, uh, the, in, in homicides, about a 10% increase from 2014 uh, to 2015. And by all statistics, by everything that we've seen so far, we've also seen an increase uh, at least uh, so far in 2000. We're predicting there'll be one in 2016. The, the data probably won't be out uh, probably till closer to mid or the end of the end of this year, uh, but we're predicting that there's going to be another increase there. Now that coincides with legislation that has been passed uh, both by the voters of California, congratulations, California electorate, as well as in the California state legislature signed by Governor Jerry Brown, that basically seeks to uh, basically reduce many felonies down to misdemeanors, and then also release criminals from jail, put them out on the streets. So it's kind of funny that, you know, let's see, we put criminals on the streets and murder rate goes up. There's absolutely no correlation there, is there? There, there possibly, couldn't possibly be, right? Right? I mean, despite the fact that there's also a dramatic increase uh, in other violent crimes, including rape, murder, and aggravated assault. Hmm, once again, we take criminals and we let them out on the streets. Uh, we take crimes that were felonies and now we make them misdemeanors so that they can be out on the streets. And then violent crime, not just murder, violent crime as a whole goes up significantly. But there's absolutely no correlation. Clearly, we need to find a safe space for these criminals. Anyway, but that's something that's the, that, once again, that is, that is not noted here. And so the important thing for us to understand is the thing that we are facing here in the state of California nationally, once again, you've heard me say this before, it's not a violence, it's not a gun violence problem, it is a violence problem. And, and the number one way in which you address violence is, ta-da, punish criminals. People who, who, people who commit these crimes, you make sure they do time. You make sure that they're punished. People wondered why crime rate went down, why violent crime rates went down and down and down. That was because of, in California, that was because of things like three strikes. That was because things like the crime bill. You know, when you actually lock criminals up, they're not able to commit crimes against the rest of us. But we don't blame the criminals. We blame guns. 
In particular, we blame guns that are not used in crimes. Welcome to California. Let's see what you folks have to say about it. I imagine you probably have some colorful things to say because I know you so well. Let's see here. Uh, we've got apparently safe space is Cal Yes, apparently California is the safe space for criminals. Go figure. Uh, Jerry Brown, God, God bless his pointy head. Yes, his head is pointy. And uh, yeah, oh well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, let's see, anything else here of interest? Oh, you guys are not very talkative today. Here we go. What a surprise. Yes. See, the funny part about it to me is, is that those on the, uh, those on the, uh, the left, the, the, the anti-Second uh, Amendment crowd, here's, here's what's interesting. So they, they, they let criminals out of jail and then they're surprised that crime goes up, that violent crime goes up. They are literally shocked and they don't see a problem. And the, 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 the saddest part about it is, is that in most cases, it is their constituents who are the victims of these crimes. These crimes are happening in their communities and they are completely and utterly oblivious to it. So, you know, it, it, you're right. It is, it is it, it, while it may be shocking to us, uh, well, it's not shocking to us because we get it. We, we understand what happens when you let criminals out. But here's the other part that's, that really worries me is they're trying to disarm us at the very same time that we're watching violent crime go up. So let's get this straight. We're going to let criminals out. Violent crime goes up. We're going to disarm law-abiding citizens who seek to defend themselves as violent crime goes up. So your choice is you either put yourself in a position to properly defend yourself and risk being locked up yourself, or you make yourself a victim to violent crime, a, a, a potential victim to violent crime. Those are the choices with which we are faced. Tom Clark, as a libertarian, I support gun rights and I believe in justice reform, but the reform has also, has also resulted in poorly written bills. Well, you know, you're right. And I think that what's interesting at the national level, you'll see the people on both, there are people on both sides of the aisle who are talking about criminal justice reform. Uh, but, but the problem is, and I'll just say here, particularly in California, we've had one party rule for so long that when the minority party, Republicans, when the minority party brings up concerns, no matter how legitimate they are, they are brushed aside as simple, well, that's just, you know, partisan naysaying. And so those issues never get ignored. I've watched bills where someone has brought up a concern about a bill and like, yeah, you know, that's a legitimate concern. We'll make sure it gets addressed in the next committee. And it never does. And thus we wind up where we are. And that's the, unfortunately, you know, I'm not going to say it's liberal or conservative. I'm going to say that's the problem with one party rule for too long. You know, people think that because you can do it, you should do it. Because if you're the one who sets the, if it's not against the rules, then it's okay. But what if you're the one who makes the rules? Shouldn't you be held to a higher standard? Evidently, they don't think so. Uh, I'm completely for it at a loss for how we get the populace to see the light and no longer, uh, no longer vote for legislators that are sinking our state. Um, I think things are going to have to get worse before they get better. I think that people are going to have to see that, look, I've been doing the same thing over and over again. I've been electing the same people over and over again, uh, and things haven't gotten any better. I've always said, look, the same people have been running the schools and the community in Oakland, in Richmond, in San Francisco, and guess what? Things aren't getting any better. Uh, the, the, by, their own, by their own account, income disparity or, or income disparity is... Uh, is, is getting bigger. The wealth gap is getting bigger. The quality of education is getting worse. And yet they keep electing the same people over and over and over again. What's that definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Well, maybe liberalism is a mental disease. Just saying. Uh, have the legislators made themselves exempt from these gun laws? I've done a video on this. No, they have not. 
Go back through. If you, when, you, when you're done watching this, go back through. I did a Coffee with Craig. It had to be not much more than a week ago, maybe about a week ago, talking about that myth. Please don't, 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 don't perpetuate the myth. If someone asks you, share that video. In fact, when I'm done today, I'll make sure I share that video in this thread so you get a chance to watch that one. Uh, voter fraud is why. Uh, you know, Steve, I would love to say that voter fraud is the reason why, but, but in the end, I, ju I really do think it is, uh, it is, you know, the average voter, the average person, they, they don't have a lot of time. They're, look, they're trying to put food on the table. They're trying to spend time with their family. They're trying to do all of this stuff. And so becoming informed is something that become about, about politics and about politicians and what they're doing becomes a low priority. And, and studies have shown that most people, the decisions they make largely come from the political advertisements that they see, which you know is targeted specifically at low information voters. That's targeted to get people emotionally engaged and to get them to make an emotional decision because that's a lot easier to do than to appeal to someone's intellect. I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, and because uh, uh, largely one party is largely absent from the political discuss discussion here in the state of California, it's real easy for the other side to pretty much lie and say whatever they want. And so they do. And thus they get their way. I, 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 look, hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> I didn't make this game. I'm just telling you the rules. Uh, everyone, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks about changing himself. That is it exactly. The first thing that we have to do is change starts at home. I have to make sure that I'm informed and I have to make sure as I'm informed, I need to make sure that I communicate to and educate those around me. Not just people who agree with me, by the way. Now, I'm not talking about the people who are way on the other side of the political spectrum. They're, they're never going to agree with you. But believe it or not, most people don't know. They just don't know. They, may, they won't admit that they don't know, but most people just don't know. So we have an obligation to, number one, inform ourselves and then become a source of information and a resource to those around us. That's one of the main things that we try to do here at FPC is to be a source of information, to, to kind of uncover and pull back the curtain and let you guys see what this political process is like, to see what we have to deal with when we go in and we deal with these legislators, to get a chance to see the, the lies that are told, uh, to get a chance to see how they're just like everybody else. There's, there's some of them who are really good and no one understand what they're doing and are out to do good. There are some who are really good and know what they're doing and really aren't interested in serving the people. And then there are some who are, eh, they're okay. You know, they're, they're all right, they're mediocre. And then there are some who you wonder how they find their way to the Capitol every morning. That is life. Anyway, folks, that's it for today's Coffee with Craig. Thank you for joining us. We will see you again tomorrow on Wednesday, which will be hump day. You guys take care and be safe. Stay free. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.